Hello everybody, I am Lavis, and the SCP I will be telling you about today is SCP-198, A Cup of Joe. Let's begin. Item number SCP-198 Object Class, Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-198 is located in a secure room of Site <coughs> with armed guards posted outside to prevent any unauthorized access. SCP-198 is to be stored under 24-hour video surveillance in a sealed and locked case, 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters, and the key kept in a secured location accessible only to those personnel with level 3 clearance and above. Under no circumstances are any Foundation personnel to handle SCP-198. All handling of SCP-198 is to be done via remote robotic means or by D-Class test subjects only. In light of Incident 198A and Incident 198B, Object Class has been elevated to Euclid and Containment Protocol 198 has been established. SCP-198's case must now be kept on a digital scale attached to an alarm system with redundant backups for power in its secure room. Any deviations in weight will indicate a breach and site supervisors must immediately enact Containment Protocol 198 detailed below. Description: SCP-198 has taken numerous forms since coming into Foundation possession in 19... <laughs> since acquisition, SCP-198 has been observed to have had dozens of different forms including a styrofoam cup, <laughs> brand glass beer bottles, <laughs> and brand aluminum soda cans, an oversized shot glass that read 1 tequila, 2 tequila, 3 tequila floor, a plastic water bottle with a label partially peeled off, and data expunged. These forms always appear partially filled with the expected liquid a vessel of that type would contain. Currently, SCP-198 appears as an ordinary white porcelain coffee mug with blue vertical stripes evenly spaced around its exterior. There are no visible manufacturer markings or otherwise remarkable details about its appearance in its current form. The object has resisted all attempts at destruction or sampling for further analysis. When inactive, SCP-198 can hold the expected 240 milliliters or 8 fluid ounces of liquid that any standard coffee mug would hold. Anomalous behavior does not manifest until a live human being grasps SCP-198 to hold it. Approximately 2 to 5 seconds after the SCP is held, it will instantly bond itself through unknown, albeit painful means, to the handler's hand or hands. Test subjects have reported the pain of bonding with SCP-198 as a searing or fiery sensation though no heat can be detected by outside observers or instruments. The use of gloves or other barriers between the object and the hand does not prevent the bonding process so long as the subject can still grip SCP-198. Extensive testing has revealed that the bond appears to be at the molecular level and is permanent until the death of its holder. To date, no means have been found to break the bond, including cutting or severing the fingers or hand of the holder as any wounds below the wrist of the test subject heal instantaneously. Further proposed testing of the range of healing up to the handler's arm is pending approval. Once bonded, any liquid inside SCP-198 will disappear and the container will inexplicably begin to fill from the bottom up with a fluid or a semi-solid material stopping only once it reaches the top of the container. The liquid or semi-solid is different for each holder, but it has to date been a bodily fluid or human excretion in each test instance. Such instances have included human saliva, sweat, blood, bile, mucus, urine, feces, and data expunged, as well as combinations of two or more of these. Once SCP-198 has filled, the holder will undergo rapid dehydration and or emaciation, becoming increasingly malnourished to the point of death, which usually occurs within 24 hours if nothing is done to prevent it. Ingestion of standard foods, liquids, or IV-supplied nutrients does nothing to reverse or slow this process. 
testing has revealed that the only means by which the subject can gain nourishment is by consuming the contents of SCP-198. However, the constant rate of dehydration and emaciation remains the same, forcing the test subject to consume vast quantities of the excretions almost constantly. Forcing the test subject to consume vast quantities of the excretion almost constantly to remain alive. As the contents are consumed, or as is often the case, dumped out of the container, SCP-198 will continue to refill itself automatically. Test subjects have lasted as long as 70 hours by consuming the excretions before finally succumbing to exhaustion or refusing to consume any more of the contents, which invariably leads to death. Upon expiration of the handler, the bond with SCP-198 is broken and the object can once again be manipulated. In approximately 75% of test instances, SCP-198 will disappear once the bond is broken and reappear almost instantly on a nearby flat surface, seemingly with a preference for tables or shelves within the same room, and take on a new form. Approximately 90% of these reappearances of SCP-198 are within the general vicinity of the now deceased handler, but several times, the object has been observed to reappear in nearby containment rooms, observation rooms, and in one case, data expunged. Due to the catastrophic nature of that incident, extreme care is to be taken when in proximity to SCP-198's containment or testing room. Foundation personnel are urged not to bring with them any beverages or containers within 100 meters of SCP-198 containment room, even when the object is not actively being researched. SCP-198 was acquired by the Foundation from an underground bunker in Germany, after the bunker's accidental discovery by construction workers. Reports of strange activity and deaths among the construction company regarding this bunker brought the object to Foundation attention. Agent J upon responding to the location, discovered several deceased and grossly emaciated corpses, both recent and some quite old. Unaware of the nature of their deaths or the SCP in question, Agent J sealed off the area and awaited backup. It was then that the nature of the SCP object revealed itself as the agent mistakenly grabbed what appeared to be an unopened bottle of water from a table at the construction site. Backup arrived to find an extremely agitated agent vomiting and struggling to remove from his hand a cup full of fresh data expunged. Agent later self-terminated during location cleanup. Incident 198A. Date 2000 Location Site Description At approximately 2.15 p.m., researcher John who was working in an observation room adjacent to SCP-198's containment room, reached for what he thought to be his thermos of iced tea, only to discover he was firmly bonded to what appeared to be SCP-198. Immediately, researcher notified site supervisors who, upon inspection of Containment Room 198, discovered that SCP-198 was indeed missing from its case. At least three months had passed since the last experiment had been conducted on SCP-198 without incident. Researcher was interviewed by site staff and was kept alive by consuming the contents of SCP-198 for 31 hours before finally refusing to drink the contents any longer. Incident 198B. Date 2005. Location Site Description At approximately 8 o'clock a.m., security guard Albert stopped to get a cup of coffee from a break room, later determined to be located three floors underneath and two hallways over from SCP 198's containment room. The guard found himself bonded to SCP-198 when he attempted to grab a bottle of dairy creamer from the break room refrigerator. Once again, site supervisors were notified of a potential containment breach and discovered SCP-198's case to be empty. Guard was interviewed and chose to self-terminate rather than consume any of the contents of SCP-198. Immediately after Incident 198-B, 
site supervisors determined that the object class should be raised to Euclid and Containment Protocol 198 was created to handle future containment breaches. Containment Protocol 198 Containment Protocol 198 is to be executed immediately by site supervisors after a containment breach of SCP-198 is detected. In the event that the alarm attached to SCP-198 scale is sounded, site is to be locked down and all personnel are to immediately avoid any beverage containers and evacuate the facility until SCP-198 can be located and properly secured. For test logs, please see Experiment Log 198A. Experiment Log 198A. Experiment Log of Dr. M on SCP-198 testing various manifestations of its anomalous properties. Notes. Testing on SCP-198 is to be done outside of its containment room in a secure experimentation room. SCP-198 is to be placed via robotic means on a plane table in the center of the otherwise empty room. During experimentation, all Foundation personnel are to remotely observe either via surveillance camera or adjacent observation room behind a secure plexiglass window. At no time should any Foundation personnel enter the experimentation room while experiments are being conducted. Armed guards and cleanup crews will be posted outside the experimentation room and will not enter until the test subject has expired. Experiment 198A-1 Date Procedure Object is observed to have the form of a small glass of water. Class D personnel instructed to enter room and touch SCP-198 with his finger, but ordered not to hold or pick up the object. Results No bonding takes place and Class D personnel is unaffected. Experiment 198A-2 Date Procedure Same Class D personnel is instructed to pick up SCP-198. Result Class D personnel screams in surprise as the bonding process takes place. Test subject immediately begins to try to pry SCP-198 from his hand. Test subject ordered to calm down and describe the contents of SCP-198. Please describe the content of the object in your hand. What the heck is going on? I can't get it off! Liquid is seen spilling from SCP-198 as the test subject flails around. Yes, we are aware of the situation. Please calm down and describe the content of the object in your hand. D-Class personnel is seen to cautiously sniff the contents of SCP-198. Is that Oh god, that's disgusting, man! Test subject stumbles slightly and falls to one knee at this point. Doc, I don't feel so good, man. Please describe what you're feeling right now. I feel weak, tired. Thirsty too. What's going on? Can I get some water, man? I'm sorry, I can't do that. But perhaps the contents in your hand. Are you f kidding me, man? No f way. Sue yourself. Approximately two hours into the experiment, the test subject is observed to curse loudly before gulping down the contents of SCP-198. Test subject periodically drinks from SCP-198 until finally succumbing to exhaustion and expiring 29 hours into the experiment. Subsequent autopsy determines the contents of the test subject's stomach to be mostly human urine. DNA profile on the urine came back inconclusive and with no known match in our database. Upon death of the test subject, SCP-198 unbonded, disappeared, and returns to the table in the form of a large, half-filled plastic pitcher of what appears to be ice and lemonade. Experiment 198A-3 Date Procedure Class D personnel instructed to enter room and don surgical gloves placed on the table next to SCP-198. Once the test subject is wearing the gloves, subject is instructed to pick up SCP-198 still in lemonade pitcher form, and pour herself a glass. Result: Test subject is observed to use both hands to lift the pitcher to pour a drink. Once again, Class D personnel shouts in surprise as the bonding process takes place despite the gloves, and appears to have both hands bonded to SCP-198. Test subject is highly agitated and clearly in pain. Container. Is that the case? Yeah, does it look like I'm not stuck? 
test subject is visibly straining to pull her hands apart from SCP-198. Can you remove your hands from the gloves? No! They're, they're stuck to this thing! Test subject pauses mid-sentence and stares at the picture in her hands. Seconds later, test subject is seen vomiting violently and falling to her knees. A brownish, semi-solid mass spills onto the floor from SCP-198. Can you please describe the content of the pitcher? <laughs> Test subject continued vomiting for approximately 10 minutes before collapsing to the floor. Test subject became uncooperative at this point and would not respond to the researchers' requests. Security guards are instructed to enter the experimentation room and terminate test subject. Testing concluded that the substance in question was human feces. Again, the DNA profile of the substance was inconclusive and matchless in our database. Upon death of the test subject, SCP-198 was unbonded and remained in its lemonade pitcher form, once again half filled with what appeared to be lemonade and ice, but did not teleport back to the table surface. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and would like to hear more, please consider liking and subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, if there are any SCPs that you would like to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.